I'm John Yates, and I'd like to thank TEDx and Furman University for hosting this presentation today on the art of digital business friendship, a new digital roadmap for combining business networking, friendship, and social community service. Now, our big idea today is that anyone can create meaningful, successful digital business friendships to help you and others anytime, anywhere, any place, and you can do it now. Now, if this guy can do it, anybody can do it. This is my 1974 senior high school class photo, and obviously I needed a haircut, and I didn't know how to dress. But I changed, and through a digital journey, through business friendship success, I was able to build business assets and digital assets, largely as a result of initially having a mentor in my sister, Jean Yates, who moved to Silicon Valley in 1979. She introduced me to the network. And as a result, today I'm a partner and chair of the technology practice at Morris, Manny & Martin, a leading law firm in Atlanta. We have over 600 technology clients, and we're also involved in working with folks within the community. I've been practicing for over 40 years, building those community relationships in the profit and nonprofit area. And the superpower that I've been able to utilize has been building business friendships using my 22,000 plus LinkedIn digital asset connections. Now, why are business friendships important? Abraham Lincoln said the better part of one's life consists of one's friendships. And in a recent Gallup poll, around 51% of the workers surveyed said having good business friends motivated them to work harder. But how do you go about building a successful business friendship network? And we'll talk today about the three key elements, creating your authentic social network on the internet, connecting with your business contacts and key influencers, and helping others through your community outreach. Now, what's our value proposition? It's that building your business friendships leads to two key elements, success in attracting and securing clients and customers, a key element in the business world. And importantly, greater financial, emotional, and personal rewards for you and for your community. So what is business friendship? It's the art of forming a meaningful and profitable relationship with a broad range of your business contacts with the goal of developing lifelong and complete friendships. And what's empowered the business friendship network? What's changed it in the digital world? Well, it's the internet. It's supercharged our ability to create business connections beyond the office on an exponentially greater level than ever before. And as a result of the pandemic, you'll see the PS. You've built digital assets in the critical world, especially now because of the work from home situation where you can't socialize with others. So digital business friendships has been a way to build your network even when you're not in the office. Now let's look at the history of forming business friendships pre-internet. It was a slow, laborious process. You had to read through stacks and stacks of magazines, newsletters, newspapers. Most of them accumulated next to your desk or next to your bed, and you ended up supporting paper drives. You had to write letters to these people. You had to hope they responded back. You had to then try to find some way to communicate them over the, t over the telephone. It was a long, elongated process. You also have something that I call the reception misconception, another way to build friendships. It was a saga of the business cards. You go to an event, you'd end up meeting a lot of people there, you put business cards in your pocket, but when you came back to your office or when you put that jacket on a week later, you had all these business cards and they were basically meaningless. You didn't even know who these people were. You couldn't remember them. Or you had written a note on the back of a business card, and in my case, I couldn't even read my writing. So they became worthless. There's another area of building friendships. People say, look, it's the golfing situation. You can go ahead and golf. Well, I have to tell you, I don't even know which, which end of this club to hold on the golf course, and nor does this fellow on the screen. It's not critical that you be a good golfer, that you be a great entertainer, or otherwise have some unique skill in order to build digital business friendships. But I would give you one caveat before we talk about the four stages of building digital business friendships, and that is be careful and avoid the digital deniers. Listen respectfully to them, but ignore those who say, I only connect to people I know, or digital and online contacts are basically meaningless, or my manual system for keeping track of business contacts works just fine for me. Listen to them, but move on. 
And think about those four stages of building successful di digital business friendships. Stage one, build that authentic digital profile. Create your digital business card on your selected social media platform. In my case, it's LinkedIn, but there are other platforms as well. Continually add business content and inspiring posts and quotes. Think about the content you're adding. Make sure that it's going to be relevant to your audience. And then record your online video intro. This is a new way of communicating the message. Here's my LinkedIn profile page, for example. And you'll see around my photo, there's an orange circle. Now, what that allows me to do is to build my digital video intro, first putting the logo on, and then a message. I'm John Gates, and I chair the technology practice at North Standard Market. We represent fast-growing technology companies and tech investors in the U.S. and internationally. Along with my MMM colleagues, we're always looking for ways to provide value add to our clients. Follow me on LinkedIn and also listen to my podcast at mmmtechlaw.com. Thanks. Stage two, connect via LinkedIn with your existing business and personal friends. Input those business cards that you just threw in the trash. Pull them out, take them off the edge of your table, pull them out of your car, the pocket in your jacket, and begin to invite them to connect with you. Connect also through LinkedIn with your office mates, your college, your high school alums, and others. And keep connecting and following, and build a daily cadence. Five to 10 minutes a day is all it oftentimes takes for purposes of thinking about building those digital assets over a period of time. How did I start? Well, it's interesting. I did something called a connect-a-thon. I basically sat down over a weekend in a, in a coffee shop and pulled those dis business cards out, pulled the alumni information I had for high school and college folks, and I started connecting. And interestingly, after a weekend of doing this, I had over 500 connections that I had extended and over 500 acceptances of those connections. So you may have to find a time to sit down and really concentrate on building it initially, but finding those business connections is vital. Stage three, follow and connect with influencers. Now, who are influencers? They're basically leaders in your business world with whom you have little or no direct contact. They may be people you read about in the paper, people you see on TV, people who have some online forum. You know they're people that have influence because they have a lot of connections on social media. And the caveat is, don't be afraid to connect, but be professional and don't be creepy. And you know what I mean by that. Now, I have four organizations that I really focus on when, it thinks, when I think about building the Digital Business Friendship Network. The Technology Association of Georgia, TAG, over 30,000 members throughout the country with a heavy focus on Georgia and Atlanta. The Metro Atlanta Chamber, one of the leading business organizations in town and in the United States. The Atlanta Area Rotary Club, focused on C-level executives, and the Woodruff Arts Center, the third largest art center in the United States, and a key point of contact with the business community that support the arts in Atlanta. So what's your strategy for connecting with influencers? How do you do it, especially if you don't know them well? Well, the first thing is it's best if you have an online intro from an existing, in my case, LinkedIn business friendship connection. If you have somebody that can make that introduction, that's great. But let's face it, you don't always have those connections. So you may need to initiate an online search and follow the influencers. Look for some way to connect with them based on what you're seeing are their feeds and their posts. And then importantly, play to their ego. We all have one. Offer the influencer something in return. Post and hyperlink to their name so they'll be able to see that you have included a post based on their social media feed. Share the influencer's post to your network, and there's a share button on almost all social media, and then add likes to their posts. Interestingly, many, many people that post and many influencers that post will look at those likes. They'll have a lot of them, but if you're there, they'll know you're paying attention to them. Now, in my case, I have a case study where one of my clients desperately needed to reach a particular venture capitalist on Sand Hill Road in the heart of Silicon Valley, but I didn't have a connection and I didn't have someone that was connected to this person. But what I did was I went online and I actually sent a message to them through my social media platform. The message was congratulations on being selected as a top US tech investor. Now I knew that because I had looked at their posts. And I went on to say, I represent leading tech companies in the Southeast and welcome the chance to learn more about your fund. Thanks, John. Now, interestingly, I got a response back. 
the venture capitalist said, I'm happy to talk with you. And that relationship has grown to where that particular venture investor has continued to fund many, many of our clients. Even though for many years, I never met the person in person, or I never, and I never spoke with the person on the telephone. So you can create those kinds of relationships via the digital world without ever having the face-to-face -face communication. And finally, stage four, become a digital leader by serving others. You have the opportunity to promote worthy causes through your digital business network. You can volunteer and serve in leadership positions with local charities, business groups, and civic organizations. That's where you'll meet a lot of the influencers, and that's where you'll develop relationships. You'll grab the business cards, but you'll also be in a situation where you connect with them. You can chair a committee or become an influencer or chair a subcommittee or just be on a committee where oftentimes the influencers are key leaders. It's a way for you to, again, show you're giving back to the community and developing a relationship with that influencer. You can also accept digital connections and make introductions because people will want to connect with you. You can accept those and then you can make introductions to others. And the last bullet, you can also connect with everyone in these organizations. You now have a common link with these people who are the influencers and others in these groups, which allows you to build out that digital network and build out your social media community. In this case, there's a photo that my wife and I took back Christmas time last year, which we posted. And it was simply a post that said, we're pr how, proud to support the Woodruff Arts Center, the arts community, and the technology community in Atlanta. And following a couple days after this post, we had over 20,000 views. Now, it wasn't a particularly attractive photo when you're wearing masks, but at the same time, it showed and highlighted the fact that we cared about the arts community and we were connected to the technology community. So people saw that, and the message was important to show that we cared about others in the community, but we also supported what was going on in the business world. So in summary, three key points. Create a digital friendship dashboard and set a goal and track your success in connecting and following. In my case, my goal is to have 1,000 connections per year. Two, take daily actions. Build a cadence of online posts, shares, and likes. For example, I mentioned earlier, 10 minutes a day. It's all it takes to looking at those posts and thinking about ways to continually build that network. And finally, get actively involved in community service. Meet the influencers, become one and connect with them. And it's amazing how often they will accept your connections even if you don't know them particularly well, but the fact that you are also helping that worthy cause and helping the community. So remember the big idea. You can create meaningful, successful digital business friendships anytime, anywhere, any place. Start now by connecting with me. Thanks.